this is already something you guys know. It's not, it's not new, but it's something that I didn't want to really talk about for a while. Like a long time, I didn't want to talk about it. I didn't really want, I would like talk about it a little bit, but I didn't want to talk about it a lot. And I didn't really go into depth and really like talk about it and sit down and have like a face to face chat with you guys. First, because I fucking suck at stories. I just suck. I just hate, I can't talk. I don't know. Words don't come out of my mouth right. I stumble. I stutter. <laughs> I just... And I also don't want people to take it out of context and say stuff like, oh, you're like an attention seeker, like stuff like that. Like I just wouldn't be able to handle it. So I just didn't talk about it for a long, long time. But we're going to do it now because I really wanted to make a YouTube video about it because I wanted to ju just in case someone wants to know my experience or it helps someone in some way. Yeah. I lived in Japan, I would say for, I was there for a year or more. And don't get me wrong, Japan is amazing and awesome. And there's so many good parts to it. There's the food, it's amazing. The culture, there, everything is so accessible. Everything, there's just so much to do at all times and it's absolutely one of the best places I would recommend to go to anybody that asked me. Every place would have a 7-Eleven, everything's so convenient and fresh and it was such a magical and different experience for me and I really really did enjoy it. The story I'm going to talk about is the sexual harassment that I experienced in Japan on many different occasions and we're gonna kind of talk it through and then maybe if I can stomach myself we're gonna watch the YouTube video that was made about it I don't watch myself ever <laughs> so it's like one of those things where I'm like oh and if I laugh it's honestly because I'm like just I don't know how to deal with emotional pain. <laughs> I don't know how to deal with trauma. So everything I do is just I lighten the mood with laughter. It's not funny. I just don't know how to deal with myself, you know? So if I laugh, well, that's why. So when I was in Japan, it was during the summer months. And it was a few months in to it where I started noticing that if I wore things like it's the summertime right so then you wear shirts and shorts and dresses something that I noticed was that every time I was alone or even with chat I was getting followed a lot so I would be out and I would this would happen at nighttime and daytime, but especially at nighttime. And because of the nature of streaming, I would be outside at night. I would be outside in the daytime. I'd be outside all the time. So I was getting followed a lot. And people would approach me and talk to me, first in like Japanese, and I'd say, hey, like I don't understand. And it was fine. I, at first I was like, oh, this is kind of awkward, it's weird, but I don't know. There are so many times that I would, I would message my Discord because I just felt so unsafe. And I was like, why is this person following me? For It would be like blocks and blocks and blocks all the time. And it happened so often. It happened almost, I would say like three times a week consistently. And what then started happening was people would come up to me and because I would just be friendly to them, people started doing what I would call a boob taps. So people would come up to me, I'd be wearing a shirt maybe similar to this and people would do this. <laughs> like this would happen on stream, off stream and that was weird. 
weird. That was weird. It was definitely something that I was, it was very uncomfortable. I was like, this is quite odd. Shortly after I was walking back after I streamed, I turned off stream and I was walking back home because I didn't want to dox myself. And a drunk guy followed me in to my locked Airbnb. So it was an apartment complex with a padlock. So you'd have to know the number. And I punched in the number and he followed me really quickly in the door. And I remember exactly what I was wearing. I was wearing a skirt and a white shirt, I think. A skirt and white shirt. And he was incredibly drunk and I could just like feel that and I was really nervous and at this point he was following me for a few blocks already and i went to the elevator and he started trying to grope me up my skirt just like something out of a movie and i just didn't know what to do i just slapped his hand hand away and i ran into the elevator and i closed the elevator and thankfully that was the end of it i didn't have to i just went up to my room he didn't follow me and I cried. <laughs> I was just like, oh my god, this is my life. And I just didn't talk about it for a bit. But that the same week, on stream this time, someone came up to me and I was doing a 24-hour stream. And I was with chat and this was 7 a.m. And I was eating an ice cream sandwich. And some guy was grabbing me and touching my boobs and just following us and you guys had to practically save me you guys sounded the alarm and I was really really thankful that you guys were there because he kept on following me and he wouldn't let me leave and he was touching me inappropriately at that time I didn't feel comfortable going to the police in Japan because I heard a lot of times that the police there don't really believe in gaijins, which, which is foreigners. They always take the national side. And in my head, I'm like, it's fine. Like, I can handle this. I can deal with this. But it's something that really affected me, I guess. To the point where I felt really unsafe to do IRL streaming at times where it would really affect me, but I'd just keep pushing it through. But there were nights and days where I was just felt really anxious and I didn't want to stream and I didn't want to go outside and do the things I used to do. I was just so afraid and I immediately started to dress differently. Um, if people approached me, I would no longer talk to them. And that just saddens me too because I really do want to get to know people and it's really fun and Japan is awesome. It was just hard. And we're gonna, I think, go through the video. I just wanna show and give more context to what was going on. Because at that time I wasn't ready to talk yet, but I'm better now where I can talk about it. So I can like play you play by play play what was happening. Um, his arm was like his arm was like down my like lower back. Like he kept on t touching my lower back. So that's where his arm is. Like what you guys are missing right now is that his arm is on my lower back and just like rubbing me. What? 
27 teach yet. X200, get lost, jerk now. <laughs> See, I, like, again, he's just like rubbing my back. He's just rubbing my lower back. It's like grabbing my waist. Okay, I'm standing up. I have to get my stuff together. Let's go. 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 let us go because everything I do is just, I'm just fucking laughing. In this moment, I just remember f like freaking out in my head. Like I, w I was just like, it was just so awkward. I just didn't know what to do. people thought that this was okay like to the point like so many people thought here let me just replay this i don't fucking like so many people did this to me i don't get it he's so <laughs> no whoa, whoa 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 man stop like thinking that was okay like this happened four or five times to me in japan especially when it was warmer and i didn't have a coat like, just people would just, if they talk to me, they would be like, think that that's okay. And it it's, was wild. Stop. Yo, stop it. No, 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 just don't, just don't touch it. Bye. Bye. You can tell, like, that's what the minute when I was, like, fucking pissed off and freaking out. I was, like, in my head, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> Okay, so this is when I started freaking out because he was following me. I'm like, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> this is like the moment I was like, it's okay. I honestly was like, oh, like this guy's touching me weirdly, whatever. Like that's a little bit weird, but like, okay, fine. But like following me, that's, I don't know. None of it's fine. I don't know. Like, that, like, that's not okay, <laughs> like, literally, I backed up, I'm so fucking, I'm just, I'm sorry, this is, like, the first time, like, reliving this, it's, like, I've never watched this before, like, <sighs> like, someone, <sighs> okay, <laughs> I told him stop in Japanese so many times, too. Like, what do you do if someone's just like. Oh my god, it's like, I don't understand. Okay, 
okay i backed up i like started trying to leave and he literally backed up with me Okay, where? Oh, he's still there. Okay, I thought he left. He's still there. This is still happening. Gotcha. So that's when I was really thankful for chat. Like, I honestly think that if you guys didn't put that scream dono, if that wasn't played, I honestly think he would have kept them following me. This by itself, honestly, in my head, I'm like, okay, you know what? It happens, whatever. Like, I'm just happy chat was there because I don't know how long he would have followed me for. There are so many times that I saw girls drunk on the streets because strong zeros in japan are really incredibly strong just one drink can just get a girl to be wobbling there's so many times where i saw girls like wobbling on the streets passed out just blacked out not even alive and there's so many times where i would i wouldn't I would pick up girls off the streets put them into taxis because i was like oh my god what's going on and it was a constant thing that I saw and experienced. So to me, my thinking is that I feel like a lot of times there would be certain individuals, predatory individuals that would go out in the early mornings and find people that were drunk, passed out, vulnerable people and then perhaps then take advantage. Because at this time, I wasn't drunk. But I can see that happening. And it's just so scary to me. And I was just like reading comments that were, like for example, like this comment, this guy saying like, if you were in New York, the men would be relentless because of your outfit. And I was really, I was really scared that people would blame me be like oh like maybe it's because of your this or that or like the way you're dressed things like that anonymous donated two dollars jasmine you drink heavily and make wrong choices this is the third in five weeks i've reported you to twitch as a danger to yourself use the ban time to sort yourself out Anyways, <laughs> sorry, I think that's all I can handle for today. I'm just thankful that you guys were all there. And I'm really sad that sometimes now I'm afraid to go outside and stream with you guys. And if you see me laughing, it's because I'm uncomfortable and I have never, I know, never know what to do. So sorry about that. I just wanted to talk about it because just in case someone else gets followed or harassed or assaulted, you know, they can speak out about it. I should use this platform to do some sort of good, right, Jet? Yeah. I don't want people to see that and see the example that I set that I'm like, oh, I'm just going to like fucking brush it away and like, it's fine, ha 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 ha, because it's not fine. It was really traumatizing for me. And... It happened so many times off camera too, so it was just one of those things where I just kept thinking, feeling more and more unsafe. I really wanted to travel the world and show you guys the world, but I started to realize that, hey, maybe 
the world isn't as safe as I thought and I should be a lot more cautious than I really am.